Do we have the power to speak things into existence? That's what we're talking about today on Morning Meds. So if you're ready, then let's go. Good morning. Good morning and welcome back to Morning Meds where we meditate on God's word in order to tackle everyday issues that we face as Christians. And if you like what you see on Morning Meds, be sure to like, subscribe, as well as share with a friend so we can make it through this together with the help of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and we thank you, God, for your awesome power. We ask you, Lord, to allow us to learn more about your word and to receive what you have for us to receive in the name of Jesus and allow us to apply it and have the courage to do it. We love you. Bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's be clear. Your words, my words, our words do have power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. We find this in Proverbs 18 and 21. So you do have power to uplift or encourage yourself and others. And you do have the power to tear down yourself or others. However, we do not possess the power to speak something that was non-existent into existence. We hear many speakers, preachers, and gospel artists quote the famous quotation, Speak things that are not as though they were. This piece of quotation is found in Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. But we diminish a passage when we only take one piece as the full context. So let's read the full verse. It says... So it's pretty clear there is someone speaking something that wasn't into something that was, but that person is God or that being is God. It's not us. But let's expand the context even more. In chapter four, Paul explains to the Romans to have faith, to go forward, believing the promise that God had given them through Jesus Christ. He uses Abraham as an example because God changed Abram's name to Abraham, which means father of many nations, 25 years before Abraham even had a child. So by Abraham walking forward and introducing himself as hi, I'm Abraham, the father of many nations. He was exhibiting faith in the promise that God had previously promised to him. This promise was already allotted to him. Malachi 3 and 6 informs us that we cannot change God's mind. He is the Lord. He changeth not. Wait. But didn't Jesus say in Mark 11, 23 that if I have faith and not doubt that I can move a mountain? Yes, that is what Mark 11 and 23 says. But two things to go along with that. Look up in verse 22 where it says, and Jesus answered, have faith in God. So the object of the doubt-free faith in verse 23 is God. The Tony Evans commentary says it like this. The most important aspect of faith then is the worthiness of its object. You must be trusting in the right thing. If you have true, vibrant faith in the God of the Bible, you have spiritual authority to access divine power. And the second thing is we must recognize that the mountain already existed. It says nothing about making a mountain out of nothing. The mountain was already there. So as it pertains to speaking something as it was not, as though it were, we do not possess that power as human beings. Our God does, but we do not. There is a practice called law of attraction, but that is not Christianity. We will cover that in a later video to come. 
The first thing you can do is use your words. Speak life. Speak encouragement. Let people know that they have a chance in heck of living a life that is pleasing to God. Also, speak over yourself. Speak life into yourself. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. And lastly, put faith in the power behind the promise. Not in your own words and your own self-serving desires, but in God and his purpose for your life. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and we thank you for everything. We thank you, God, for having for you having the power to speak things that are not as though they are. We trust your plan, God. You call us whole. You call us well. You call us blessed, Heavenly Father, and we believe your word, Lord God. We thank you for all that you've done, Lord. Your word says that you will give us a life more abundantly. We trust that. We trust that, God. We don't trust our selfish desires. We don't trust our heart, God. We trust you we know that you will lead us in the right way and we ask you God to give us the courage to do those things and to trust you no matter what we thank you father give us peace give us uh, health give us a freedom from this anxiety of reaching levels that don't even exist and don't even matter we love you keep us father we thank you in Jesus name we pray amen